Hey, hope everyone is well. I uh, thought I'd do a quick video here. Um, first snowstorm of the season here in New England and thought I'd try to take advantage of some daylight. Um, I've got three lights here in the Hallicrafters kitchen which are running full blast yet it still looks uh, dim so that will give you an idea of uh, how horrendous lighting conditions are in New England. But anyways, um, I wanted to try to do this video and maybe shatter a few myths about what uh, folks often refer to as boat anchors. And yeah, some folks are going to say, well, the S38 isn't really a boat anchor. It's a uh, All-American 5 on steroids or, uh, you know, a souped up All-American 5. Well, yes and no. Um, it does have a couple of features that really are useful. And, uh, you know, to this day, it amazes me online when you start reading some of the myths about uh, radios. Um, people will say, well, they don't pick up anything anymore and the bands are dead and you got to be patient with this hobby. Um, it's not the internet. Uh, there's no magic bullets. Uh, people have been receiving stations uh, worldwide for decades. It can still be done today. And hopefully this video might uh, show you a few different ways you can maybe cut through the mud and uh, pick up some stations that you might not, not normally pick up. The first myth that I want to shatter is this guy right here, the noise limiter. You know, I started in this hobby uh, in the 1970s when uh, my dad gave me the big brother, the SX-42, which we have right here. But my dad started this hobby early and uh, has um, basically all three of the Hallicrafters radios from the 1946 era. And Hallicrafters was very much a good, better, best uh, kind of company. Maybe much in the way that automobiles are sold today or computers or tablets or phones I'm gonna tell you this little guy right here which some people say is a souped up All-American 5 or AA5 on steroids is pretty darn sensitive um, if you're patient with it you can pull a lot of stuff out of the mud this noise limiter you know, I, rem I remember seeing in uh, publications like World Radio TV Handbook and the Passport uh, to World Band Radio, a lot of people would say, whoa, uh, a noise blanker is better. You know, uh, noise limiters don't do anything. Well, that's not really true. And, and I'm going to show you why. Um, I'm also going to show you how... Features like that noise limiter can make all the difference in the world. Now, all three of the radios that I'm going to show you today have been fully electronically, mechanically, and cosmetically uh, restored. So I'm guessing that features like the noise limiter um, have the best chance of working well. Well, I'm going to show you how well these things work here in a minute. And I think you'll be pretty uh, surprised. So to do this video, I thought I'd use a station. I'm about 50 miles from Boston. So WBZ, which is a clear channel, uh, 50,000 watt station. It comes in pretty good uh, here in uh, Metro West uh, Boston. Um, but you can hear right here. Got a little bit. 
it's a good signal as a little bit of a static but in a minute we're going to add a lot of static and that's going to come from uh, a light dimmer here in the house you're not going to believe how much noise this thing introduces and you might also not believe how much noise that little noise limiter cuts down on so we'll get that uh, light dimmer going and I'll give you a uh, quick demo there you go you can hear the static uh, sound al almost like a old car ignition um, like a 60 50 or 60 cycle like a pulse but let's turn our little noise limiter on Not bad. There it is off. There it is on. Doesn't completely cut the noise, but does a pretty good job. Uh, next, I think we'll move over to the S40 in spirit of the good, better, best. Um, I'll tell you a little bit of a story on the radio, and we'll, we'll see if we can do the same demo. So I've been having the darndest time uh, with one of the vacuum tubes uh, in this S40 and it's the 6 SA7 which I, I think there's maybe a faulty tube socket or uh, something wired into uh, the socket that's loose but when I power this thing up I kind of have to wiggle that tube around a little bit um, otherwise um, it goes deaf. So anyways, here we have our S40. And here the static. We'll turn that noise limiter on. Let's hope uh, the radio doesn't go deaf because I was experimenting with this earlier today and uh, I turned the limiter on and then I would sound would cut out until I wiggle that tube around again. Oh. Here we go. Pretty good. You can still hear the static, but it does help. I know I've shown this radio in many videos. Uh, this is the SX42. Beautiful, beautiful radio. Uh, we're using the R42 reproducer right there next to my cup of coffee. But we'll turn the noise limiter on on this guy. See what it can do. Pretty good. And, and the sound isn't really garbled. But I'll also show you how this can work on weak signals. That's without. That is with. If you want to copy a signal, you use what you've got and you don't uh, believe the hype that says, well, noise limiters don't work. Noise limiters only work. That's kind of bunk. I think this will prove it. without and with so next demo we're going to stay with the sx42 i'm going to show you some crystal phasing and selectivity because you can actually get some really good single sideband performance out of these radios okay so full disclosure here i do not know Morse code and I don't know how to copy CW well these older rigs when you see CW in your reception mode that's kind of a misnomer um, that activates your beat frequency oscillator or BFO 
This radio does not have a product detector, so what I've done here, so that the signal doesn't overload uh, the radio, I shut off my AVC, automatic volume control. Of course, my reception is in CW. My sensitivity is down low, and my volume, my AF gain, is all the way up. You know, the thing about sensitivity controls is if you have them, that doesn't mean you. it always needs to be up at, at 10. But now I'm going to show you what I can do with this selectivity. We're, we're abroad. We'll go to medium. Go to sharp. Of course, our sensitivity goes down, so we'll pull that up a little bit. But now, we're going to turn on our crystal phasing, which also has a broad, medium, and sharp setting. We've got the phasing set at 12 o'clock. Look at what happens. You want narrow? You've got narrow. You can... We'll go to medium. We'll go to sharp. Look at what that does to the, the shape of the audio. I, I'm telling you, if, if you're in crowded conditions, try this for a uh, single sideband. Um, this is 20 meters during the day. If you're in crowded conditions, this can really help you. Look at that. Now, it's not going to work as well as, let's say, a notch filter. But look at, look at how that can really pull down the um, your noise floor. And it can also help with adjacent interference. So, point here is, don't be afraid to play with some of those controls, and and don't believe some of the um, urban legends and myths that were spread about these radios maybe decades ago. I remember there was a guy in the World Radio TV Handbook. Or no, it might have been, I, I think he jumped from WRTVH to Passport, Passport to World Band Radio, uh, Larry Magny. And, you know, his reviews were usually fun to listen to, but then he'd make like blanket statements like noise limiters don't work. Buy a radio that has a noise blanker. Uh, you use what you've got and you use it to your advantage. So that's how you can have a lot of fun with the, with these older rigs. And I um, hope this video was helpful, informative, and maybe helped uh, to perhaps uh, debunk some of those legends. Hope you have good listening and uh, take care for now.